Hello, you beautiful person, and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing okay. Welcome to my March TBR. I have a lot of things going on in March, but I would really, really love to thank once again Book of the Month for supporting my channel and sponsoring today's video. There's a very exciting announcement because seven, seven different books to choose from. If you are unfamiliar with them, they are a US only based subscription box company. And what they do is go through a wide range of genres, of authors, of books, most of them new releases. And they say, hey, what do people want to read? What do you guys want to read? And if you don't want to do your research, which takes so long coming through books that you think you're going to love, especially new ones that are coming out because there's always something new coming out. They curate and create a list for you guys every single month. And now they're doing seven of them for you to pick from. And so you pick which book you want. They ship it right to your door. Let me show you the seven they've got for this month. And then the one that I think I would pick, I think I have a pretty good idea. So we have the Cartographers by Peng Shepard, which I think takes the cake for the most beautiful book that they have this month. We have the Verifiers by Jane Peck. We have the Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. We have Dating Dr. Dill by Nisha Sharma. I love this one. This one's going straight on my romance shelf. And then I think this is the one I would pick. This is The Unsinkable Greta Jones by Jennifer E. Smith. This one I would pick because um, we are set on an Alaskan cruise and we all know how I feel about the winter and ice and stuff like that. But then I think there's also a romance between our protagonist Greta and this guy Ben who is also on board the cruise because he is um, writing a paper or something on Jack London's The Call of the Wild. So it just sounds, it just sounds like so my kind of thing. And finally, we have Tell Me Everything by Erica Krauss, Krauss. We have Lucy Foley's, the very famous uh, Lucy Foley's new release, The Paris Apartment, which is another locked room mystery. So if you guys are thinking of getting yourself a book of the month or books of the month, you can use my code Emmy as per usual and get your first box for $9.99. That's a hardcover book for $9.99 crazy. Definitely feel free to check out their selections. They've got some good ones this month. So thank you book of the month so much. And let's go see what I can cram onto my crazy TBR. All right, yes, it is once again that time of month where we get to plan out the whole month of reading. Um, as you guys just saw, I sat down with my reading journal and this month is gonna be so heavy. March is the month of madness. It is March madness. With school, things are picking up. All of a sudden, 
the nice like loose poetry reading is completely gone. I have so many long works to get through this month in terms of uni as well. It is the last month, like the last full month of classes because April is exam month. Pretty much all of April is exam month. And so I have two tests in March, two big tests in March. I also have a presentation to give in March, a seminar to give. And I also have two big essays, one of them the biggest essay I've ever written. So I have like five huge things to do. And then outside of those five huge things, I have so much reading. This is probably the heaviest month of reading. So um, yeah, I can, I can see a lot of literature student vlogs coming because I'm gonna need something to keep me sane, to keep me motivated. And I think a lot of March's gruelingness is definitely gonna influence um, a lot of the stuff I pick up this month. So hopefully this month we can have some sort of balance essentially, but how are you guys? How are you doing today? Today is Sunday. I am just, I'm coming off today is my last day of my reading week, my break from uni. So I thought it was a good time to just prepare, sit down with you guys, take a deep breath. I know a lot of you guys are going through finals and everything coming up too. So I am right there with you. I'm feeling stressed but I'm feeling also okay and I know I can do it, hopefully. <laughs> Today is snowing, it's just snowing a little, little bit. It's very cold. I just made a very, very too hot cup of tea to drink right now. Um, I believe it was called Mountain Chai. This was a gift from one of you guys. Why do I deserve this? You guys give me tea. I wanna, I wanna take you out for tea. I wanna take you on a tea date. Oh, it smells really good. It smells like cinnamon hearts. I love it. Um, so I'm gonna wait for that to cool down and I'm gonna show you my school stuff first, just very briefly get it out of the way. Um, the stuff that I can't really show you, we also need to buy, I think only one book. Hello? Okay, someone needs to get their brakes checked, sir. I have to read Seamus Heaney. I've never read Seamus Heaney before, so I'm really excited. This month as well, most of these I've never read before, um, which is very exciting because um, this year that's been rare for me. So we have Seamus Heaney, we have three of his poems, Digging, Punishment and the Grobbal Man. I don't think I'm saying that right. And then I'm also going to be reading a lot of Alice Oswald's Memorial, which I've never read before, as well as McCormick's book Solar Bones, which is a very, I think, long novel that I don't have, so we need to order that one. And then for my other class, I have Andrew Marvell's uh, Three Poems, Coronets, and Horatian Ode, and something about Appleton. Something about apples? <laughs> and then we're also studying Henry Vaughan and John Milton, and this is where it gets even even longer because we have Lycidas, the Areopagitica, Pagitica, never of that one by Milton yet, and then the whole of Paradise Lost. I've never been asked by a professor or by a class to read all of Paradise Lost. It's usually just a select number of books, but for my Renaissance class, he wants the whole thing. <laughs> we're going to study the whole thing of Paradise Lost, so. Let's go grab it. Also, my shirt <laughs> says muffins for puffins. Um, I found this thrifted a couple years ago. I believe is from a cafe in Newfoundland and Labrador called the Puffin Cafe because I remember when I used to work at the bookstore, I had a girl come up to me and be like, oh my gosh, like I finally found another person who goes to this university who's from Newfoundland and Labrador, like you're wearing the Puffin Cafe shirt. I had to break her heart and be like, I'm so sorry. I'm not, I'm not a newfie. Um, I just found the shirt thrifted and thought it was so cute. But maybe one day I will go to the Puffin Cafe. Um, because I just think it's so cute. It's so cute. I love it. All right, so here he is. Here's John. Here's John Milton. Literally every single person in this Renaissance class, their first name is John. I can confirm this. I have read, I th haven't read all of this already. I've certainly read most of it. So I think what is gonna probably be the case just because of how busy March is, um, and you guys have already seen me do videos where I've been reading this pretty extensively. Like I had to read four books of this alone in I think, was it October or November? Um, when I was writing an essay because I've already written an essay on Paradise Lost this year actually, which you know, I read, I wrote um, about Eve and the garden and like nature and stuff. Um, and her identity as just part of the garden, essentially another plant. Um, 
So I think what is going to happen is that I'm going to skip over the parts that I've already read for sure this year. Um, as well, I've had to read Paradise Lost, I think every year of my English degree, because it's just that seminal. It's just, it's just that good. It's that important. Um, I definitely had to read it in my first year. Had to read, first year was all the bits with Satan and his fallen angels and pandemonium and like the city of hell and the colonization of hell and then the subsequent colonization of earth. Um, kind of through that lens and then my second year when where did I read this? Maybe I avoided it in my second year actually. So actually in my time in university I've already written two essays on Paradise Lost. I wrote one um, about Satan and colonization in first year and then in my third year now I've written about Eve so I think we're gonna steer away from trying to do any more on this right now because I want to broaden my horizons but I still need to read it so I'm just gonna start with book one and then if I feel like I've already read a section and I'm good with it I'll just skip it because like that's that's the reality of doing English sometimes you just don't have time to do everything and I'm only a part-time student right now like I think I made, I hope I've made that clear, but I'm just a part-time student and like this is the amount of work that I have. So yeah, <laughs> I'm hoping that next year I can go back to full-time and I think I'll be able to, but um, this is just crazy. And I had completely forgotten like how much work, how much time, how much energy it takes. Um, and I'm only doing two full year classes at the minute. So yeah, but anyway, let's put them on the pile. Let's put them on the pile. Hachi, can you? Can you be the keeper of the books for this month? Okay, super. I'm just gonna put Paradise Lost with you there. Don't read it and become sentient and, you know, take over the world or anything, okay? Okay, oh, where did I put my tea? I've already lost my tea. Just to get the rest of the school stuff out of the way, I'm gonna order right now um the other book that i need for my other class and that is solar bones this is a new release i have never heard of it i've never read it um i think it's very is it very postmodern that's the vibe i'm getting let's see solar bones i think this is a piece of irish literature um oh chuggies for ireland yes okay a vital, tender, death-haunted work by one of Ireland's most important contemporary writers. It is a celebration of the unexpected beauty of life and of languages and our inescapable nearness to our last end. It is All Souls Day, and the spirit of Marcus Conway sits at his kitchen table and remembers. He recalls his life in rural Ireland. So he's dead, and he's recalling his life. I think I just read something a little bit like this. Conway's thoughts go further, outward to the vast systems of time and history that hold us all, and he stares down through the vortex of his being. Okay, definitely giving me Cloud Atlas vibes. It is $19, 19 loonies. Oh, but the hardcover is only a dollar more. I actually like paperbacks more than hardcovers, I'm not gonna lie. Um, so there we go. Oh my god, that's a cute notebook. Stop, you're done. You're done. Why is it suggesting to me stationary? It knows me. It knows my weakness. Oh, pastel highlighters. I see. What I think I'm gonna do, I have in my audiobook hold. I talked about this one in my uh, January TBR, but it actually never got in. And that is The Body Keeps the Score, which is nonfiction about trauma and the way that your body remembers it, stores it, handles it, processes it, or doesn't process it. And people said that this is a very heavy, read like be careful i think it's gonna i think it's gonna do wonders for me i think it's gonna be very helpful um but i think i would like a physical copy of it because i think it's gonna be something i'm gonna want to reread return to take notes on and all of that stuff and i think sometimes listening to nonfiction can be a bit difficult i'm gonna do it for myself because i think this is gonna help me ultimately and that's what we're trying to do this year we're trying to heal <laughs> okay so let's let's check out is there anything else i need no now emma you're done should i get chocolate no no i actually need to check if memorial by alice oswald is in my textbook because i'm not sure if it is no oh chenny Achebe is in here okay just kidding so we actually have to buy one more book <laughs> Memorial, a version of Homer's Iliad. Okay, I kind of, I really only know a little bit about this, is that it is a translate, is it a, it's not really a translation, it's a new spin on the Iliad. It's a, it says it strips away the narrative of the Iliad, the anger of Achilles, and the story of Helen in favor of attending to its atmospheres.
for the Dickens vs. Tolstoy pick for February and March. I mentioned this last month. I thought it was Dawn Begins Sun, but it's not. It's Barnaby Red, and I am 124 pages through this. Guys, I'm loving this. I was so worried because I saw Lucy and Carolyn um, didn't like it and haven't been enjoying it, but I'm having like the best time ever. As you can see, there's so much I'm like looking for and just finding and I miss Dickens and I really, 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 really like it. So the plot of this one is that we're following a bunch of people and for Dickens, this is a piece of historical fiction because he's writing about the 1780s, I believe, um, and the anti-Catholic riots that are going on. But actually we haven't got to that part yet because the book opens with a few series of like murder mysteries, unsolved crime, um, people and like their families, the, basically sons and fathers and daughters and fathers or nieces and uncles who are displaying very different um, interests and values in the spheres of their life like marriage and social distinction and stuff like that. And there's been so much gothic and like it's just so fascinating to me. Um, to explore the reasons why maybe Dickens chose to write a historical fiction about anti-Catholic um, protests and this like this mood that England was going through at the time and what it says about the point in Victorian history uh, where Dickens lives and what's going on in his own time frame. There's a lot in here about like the return or like the return of the repressed if you wanna if you wanna drag Freud into it. Um, maybe he drags himself into it honestly um and that's been purple so as you can see there's so much like i mean the gothic kind of has some of that already in it but there's been stuff about like murders coming back there's a lot of like ghostly things we have talking ravens and at the center of it all we do have barnaby barnaby's father was murdered a long time ago i don't believe the culprit was ever caught i missed his descriptions i missed everything and i think this is perfect because it's set in march right now and i'm reading it in march and it says it was on one of those mornings common in early spring when the year fickle and changeable in its youth like all other created things is undecided whether to step backward into winter or forward into summer and in its uncertainty inclines now to the one and now to the other and now to both at once wooing summer in the sunshine and lingering still with winter in the shade it was in shorts on one of those mornings when it is hot and cold wet and dry bright and lowering sad and cheerful withering and genial in the compass of one short hour ah! dickens i love you dickens i love you i'm so happy you're reading this i've been trying to read 15 pages a day just to get through it um for the span of the book club but what's been ending up happening is that i sit and read far longer past those 15 pages just because i've been really enjoying myself so yeah I'm, I'm just liking it so much like you know when you highlight a whole page it's good it's good stuff it's very good stuff so um yeah that is barnaby Reg, and we will be discussing this in a live show on my channel the first weekend in april an audiobook I currently have on the go is Deadly Dreams by K.J. Sutton. This is the third book in the Fortune is Worn series. This is a reread for me, um, or a re-listen to for me, but I'm, as you guys know, just been going through this whole series again to finally get to the new release, so that is another thing I am listening to. It's quite a long one as well, but yeah, I don't want to say anything because spoilers since this is the third book, but... Okay, so I don't think you guys have seen this, but I was gonna go through my shelves now. So I did move this bookcase out into the front room, which I really like. Um, down there is normally like my stationary stuff and pen pal letters I've been writing to you guys, but I've been using it almost every day. So it's just on my desk. Um, so I'm gonna pick out a few audiobooks first. 
um, just some audiobook options I have. I think I've been trying to narrow it down between two. I'm really in the mood for sci-fi, so this is all of my science fiction. And I think I've read most of it actually, but we have The Small Way to, a l or sorry, <laughs> The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers, um, which I've heard a lot about and I'm really in the mood for like a mad dash space opera e um, high stakes adventure, just gallivanting in space, honestly. So that's option one. And then the other one is actually Blood of Elves, um, the first Witcher book which I do have the option, both of these for audio. Um, I just messaged Carolyn because we said we were gonna buddy read the Witcher books together. I think she started with the short stories, but I hate short stories. So I was like, you know what? You just read them, tell me anything I need to know. And I'll just start with the first proper novel. Um, so right now it's between these two. I'm gonna wait and see if Carolyn gets back at me, gets back to me. <laughs> and then I will probably um, put this one into my audio library, but I am really, wanting to read this one too. So we'll see, I'll be happy with either of these, honestly. Like I said, this month in terms of school um, is crazy. So what I kind of want is just motivation to do it. And I love getting motivation and inspired from books that are set in school. Not really too much dark academia. That's not really what I want right now because I just haven't been loving it. Um, but I do have a few books that are set in school and are about like falling in love with learning and just like the passion of school and that's what that's what I need. I need a little bit of that. Um, I need a little help right now. So the first one is Blue Period, the manga. And like I said, this month I am as well trying to um, read more just fun books to balance out the intense workload I have. So this is volume one by Subasa Yamaguchi. You guys have been screaming at me to read this ever since I found it. Super luckily now that I know kind of the popularity of this manga and anime in one of my little library book box videos. Um, and I did, since then, I have actually watched the first episode of the anime, really liked it. So I think I'm gonna pick this up for sure in um, March because this is about someone who doesn't know what he wants to do with his life and then he discovers uh, in high school that he is falling in love with painting. Dream A Little Dream by Kirsten Gear is another new addition to my shelves. I got this from Christmas from one of you guys. Thank you so much. I love Kirsten Gear, and this one is set at a boarding school in London. Um, I don't think it's too much about school and academic stuff, but it sounds fun. It's young adult. Um, there's some romance and I'm intrigued. So I think I might put this one on because Kirsten Gear just, I don't know. I hope her other works give me the same feeling as A Castle in the Clouds, but yeah, we're going to see about this one, I think. So put this one on just to like, just to have fun. And Kirsten Gear, I really, really loved her. So I have high expectations. I'm not going to lie for um, Dream a Little Dream. But that is also book one of the Silver Trilogy, right? So, yeah. So I think I'm going to leave it there because I don't want to be too ambitious. Like, I don't know how my reading is going to go this month. I always say that, but then I always end up, like, audiobooks always end up saving my day um, alongside all the school readings. So those are the big books for school, the poems, and then I'm still waiting on all of those orders to come. I guess I could technically put The Body Keeps the Score on here too, but we'll see how that goes. I think that one's going to take me months um yeah i'm a little bit scared for that one honestly if anyone else is reading that let me know how your journey is going i'd love to join you i think it's something that i'd like to do with like people as a whole so if you are reading that like please tell me about it because i'm a little just a little scared to confront stuff that you know you you don't want to confront so yeah but paradise lost is the big one barnaby rudge is another big one and then deadly dreams is gonna be an audiobook i think if i finish deadly dreams on audio i might consider picking up Beautiful Nightmares, which is the fourth Fortune of Sworn book. Um, but yeah, just is like to treat myself for all the hard work I've been doing. But like that is another huge book to dive into when you're in the middle of so much stuff. But like Blue Period, I'm really excited about. Dream a little dream, I'm really excited about. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love spending the afternoon with you guys or morning or whatever time it is for you going through books, trying to figure out what to read um, and just having a good old time. So yeah, I guess for my around the world challenge as well. What does it look like we have? I think only Ireland is the new one for me. Yeah, only Ireland, but maybe maybe we'll change that. We'll see what happens. If I get my work done um, sooner rather than later, we'll see. But thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to Book of the Month for sponsoring the video. The link is in the description as per usual. And until next time, I will see you very soon. Let me know what you guys are reading, what you're picking up, if you're reading anything cool. And I hope you have the best day ever. I really, really do. Please keep safe. Please keep okay. Sending you so much love. Ciao.